All right, all right. So I know what you're probably wondering if you watched the last top 10 strongest video. Mystic, I thought you said you were gonna do rocks. In fact, I think the next list I should do should be about rocks. I wanna talk about rocks. We're doing rocks. I, I the, the explanation is, is rather embarrassing. You see, I was going out for a walk in the park, just enjoying the fresh air and doing what I said I'd do in the grass starter video. So I think I'll just go outside and touch some grass. And right as I was thinking to myself what I wanted to put on the rock list, I got distracted and badly. I saw this really cool bug in the grass and I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool looking. I really like this bug. And then I went home immediately sat down in my chair, got on my computer, and began to viciously ramble on in my writer's DMs before he told me that if I love bugs so much, then why don't you write the video about them? And I told him, oh yeah, well I'll do just that. And then began to viciously write down the strongest bug list. We'll not be using Z moves, Mega, or G Max here, nor will we be using super legendaries like Arceus, Bug. Honorable mention to Vivalon in Durant though, for just being really solid Pokemon. Ah yes, Galvantula. I do enjoy Galvantula a lot, if only because I've got personal memories of it in a draft I did way back in the day. My very first match, they led Lando T and I led Galvantula, and I realized that webs didn't help me. So I clicked HP Ice, and that turn one play gave me what I needed to win the rest of the game. I used to consider it the best sticky web setter until it was brought to my attention that something higher on this list does it better. But I think Galvantula still deserves this spot here. Compound Eyes to make its thunder horrifyingly accurate, as well as access to Thunder Wave over Blood Say, Stun Spore to more consistently paralyze a Pokemon, as well as access to stuff like Bug Buzz and Giga Drain to make you think about what fourth move you'd run in a world without Hidden Power Ice. It's got solid speed and solid special attack, albeit it's frail, but it does the job of hitting hard enough to be a threat and also setting up sticky webs well enough to take this spot. Swords Dance, Speed Boost, and Baton Pass is as set as all this time, and is also very illegal nowadays to run, so Ninjask will not be taking this slot. However, back when it was legal, a Pokemon that did the job even better got introduced anyways, being Scullipede, because it didn't have to Baton Pass anyways, and instead could just threaten the opposition with Rock Slide, Earthquake, Poison Jab, or Megahorn. So, what does Scullipede do nowadays? Well, it sets up Sword Stance. And with access to Speed Boost, it threatens stuff with a combination of the aforementioned moves. Now, one could argue that it's also a Spikes and Toxic Spikes setter. And that is a valid argument. Is what I would say if I wasn't covering my ears and saying, la 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 la, I can't hear you. Because playing a Speed Booster with access to Sword Stance as a Hazard setter Sounds like the coward's way out. That's like if Blaziken got Stealth Rock and suddenly that's what people decided to do with it. Or worse, Garchomp got spikes in its kit and oh, oh no. It kills me how much I wish this slot was Golisopod, I swear. Golisopod will always be my favorite first impression Pokemon but its ability Emergency Exit works against it as much as it does for it. And sometimes you find yourself wishing they gave it just about anything else. Like Tinted Lens, Hustle, Defiant, Mold Breaker, Protosynthesis. If only there was a hip new bug fighting type that has access to first impression and is really good on Sun Teams. With access to stuff like Flare Blitz, Close Combat, and U-Turn, or Bulk Up, Will-O-Wisp, and Morning Sun. It would either run a Killer Terra Bug or Terra Fire set, depending on what it felt like trying to beat. But, sadly, a Pokemon like that doesn't exist. 
So I'll just give this spot to Golisopod anyways, since there is no such past paradox Pokemon that I could possibly be talking about at all. Now, Golisopod is only outclassed by one first impression Pokemon. So long as I ignore the truth. Speaking of things that outclass Golisopod and happen to have tinted lens, Lokix finds itself being number seven on this list for every reason you might expect. Banded Terra Bug first impression from an adamant Lokix breaks through a lot of things. That's... that's really it. Sure, Axis the knockoff was utterly massive, and then attacks like Axe Kick, U-Turn, and Sucker Punch all have their place on a Lokix set, but we all know the game-winning move here is coming in, hitting first impression to revenge kill a weakened Mon, switching the sack something, coming in with low kicks to hit first impression to revenge kill a weakened Mon again, and you see what's going on here. A rinse and repeat cycle until you've won the sack war and the game, all thanks to low kicks. Admittedly, while a bit of a one trick, the trick in question is literally jumping the Grand Canyon while doing 53 backflips while juggling, and also resetting Rap God. I wasn't sure if Cleaver was actually better than Low Kicks, or if I was coping, but it occurred to me that while Low Kicks is carried by its ability to outright win the game on the spot, Cleaver is responsible for putting Pokemon like Low Kicks in that position to begin with all thanks to its trusty Stone Axe. Sharpness boosted Stone Axe is ever so slightly weaker than Stone Edge. It also puts up Stealth Rock, and that's all you really need to know about it. Admittedly, in terms of bulk, it just needs a little more so it can actually live hits. Or, better yet, in terms of speed, maybe they could have made it faster. But as Mega Garchomp taught us, if you are given an Axe, you are losing speed as a trade-off. But for what it's worth, while it may have three common and exploitable weaknesses, it literally sets up rocks while attacking. Therefore, it's automatically good. Feel free to combo this with U-Turn, X-Scissor, Close Combat, or Sword Stance if you're feeling crazy. All right, so the thought is in the air, right? Why is Rabombi not higher up? It's one of the most used Pokemon in Generation 9 Ubers, is the single best Sticky Webber, and in Gen 9 OU, it's one of the greatest Pokemon in the format, and has a home with Pokemon like Goldango and Samurott on Hazard Stack offense. And you're right, this is all pleasant and amazing information. But Rabombi is one of those Pokemon that is good because of its surroundings. Its bug and fairy typing alongside Quiver Dance, Stun Spore, and Moonblast, alongside a solid ability in Shield Dust, are all dandy. But they all work well in specifically this generation. Let me explain. The best hazard remover in OU is Great Tusk, who Rabombi matches phenomenally against. Iron Treads isn't as common in the tier, so odds are, Hazards are staying up in OU, partially because Rabombi is good against what is currently good. Stuff like Excadrill and Starmie aren't around to contest Great Tusk. I'll tell you what, Freezai made a video covering exactly this, and I don't want to just repeat what the man said when he says it really well. But that doesn't really make Rabombi bad or anything. The tools it does have, such as its excellent special attack and speed to clean up with Quiver Dance in the late game, or procure webs in the beginning of the game and get momentum going, are excellent tools. It deserves to be here, and one could argue I should bump it a slot higher. But I think that it's perfect right here as the fifth best bug. But I'll tell you what, if it's still OU in Gen 10, I'll eat my words. Scizor truly has the legacy of being one of the all-time GOATs, even with its modern-day shortcomings and UU placements, which is still better than a lot of Pokemon from its generation have landed in by miles. Swords Dance and Technician Boosted Bullet Punch are an old reliable combo since Pokemon Platinum, 
back when it had Roost, it was great at using its bulk and amazing typing to great effect. U-Turn makes it an excellent pivot, and then options like your choice of base 120 power fighting move, defog, and knockoff all bring it some source of power. Typically, the best ways to play it are with Boots and Defog, a bulky setup sweeper with Sword Stance and Bullet Punch, which is my personal favorite, or outright Sheer Force with Choice Band. Your Terra is usually always Steel to maximize your bullet punches. And even if it isn't an OU Mon nowadays, don't let your guard down. Scizor still has some tricks up its sleeve. It's sadly just a little harder to work with but it's still amazing and it's got the results to back that up. Sometimes I miss its mega though. Ah yes, the greatest quiver dancer to ever live, Volcarona. This absolute monolith of a Pokemon whose power could barely be contained in its debut gen even without heavy duty boots. While it did take a small seat back in Generation 6, in Gen 7, it made excellent use of Z-Crystals to replace its old reliable gems. And in Gen 8, it made use of Boots, despite not even having feet and claiming dominance on the generation. But then, in Generation 9, it was bestowed a new mechanic responsible for many bands, itself included. By changing its type and shredding its weakness litten coil of Bug and Fire, it could completely turn games around with stuff like Quiver Dance, Fiery Dance, Bug Buzz, Giga Drain, or whatever type it turned into's Terra Blast. Oh, and bulkier variants, just like being hard to kill and abusing Morning Sun, while also threatening any physical contact with Flame Body just to make it even harder to kill. Due to the fact that it could Terra into a multitude of good types, games against Volcarona in Gen 9 have become, you have the answer? or you don't, thus giving it the name Matchup Moth. Matchup Moth is OU in Nat Dex and Ubers in Gen 9 to this day, making sure to keep that spot as a top tier Pokemon solidified. It's at the apex of its power in this form. And I find it funny that it gets weaker in the future and the downgrade isn't even that bad of a downgrade, but it's said downgrade doesn't know Quiver Dance. So, it's a downgrade regardless. Well, Volcarona is the best natural born bug type on our earthly soil. But what if we were to extend our horizons and look into the great beyond? We'd find ourselves staring at my favorite target for banded scissor bullet punch. Feromosa is the embodiment of a true glass cannon in every way, shape, and form. Its defenses are more thin than Game & Watch, and it's as light as Pichu, but its offenses are on equal footing to Ganondorf. Base 137's in both of its attacking stats, allowing it to easily commit to any side of the spectrum if not play mixed. 151's speed to make it the fourth fastest Pokemon right below Regieleki, Deoxys Speed, and Ninjask. And then it backs all of this up with the coverage move pull that has just enough spice to make quite the spicy combination of attacks. U-Turn, Close Combat, Ice Beam, Drill Run, Triple Axle, Poison Jab, Throat Chop, and if it ever really wanted to, if it absolutely knew it could get that one free turn against you, knowing that you fear it and want to switch out into something a bit more sturdy, it can use Quiver Dance. It won't, of course, because those paper-thin defenses make it a bit of a wasted slot. But you can't discount the idea that maybe, just maybe, someone is crazy enough to try it. And if you ever let it go off, just forfeit. They have the moral victory on you anyways. Ah yes, humanity's second attempt at a Mewtwo. And it would then go on to lose the Mewtwo in a movie, which is a pretty bad movie debut for you. But at the very least, Genesec gets the consultation prize of looking cool and sporting a cannon on its back. It can literally fire lasers. But that's not all. It's also got a ridiculously solid bit of stats and Mewtwo levels of adaptability. For the most part. Sadly, while never good in Ubers, 
it at least made sure to consistently break OU with its many good sets. Scarf was the standard, of course, since it got the jump on a lot of good Pokemon with it and, and instantly created momentum. Rock Polish allowed it to not lock itself and then create a late game cleaner with unopposed coverage options. Bandit Extreme Speed with three other attacks was a good mix-up option. And then it's got special attacks at the wazoo it can throw at you instead, in case you expected physical. It's got scissor level typing with mini legendary stats. And if there's one thing that it did that Mewtwo can appreciate, it's the wide coverage pool. Bolt Beam coverage, Blaze Kick and Flamethrower, Bug and Steel Stab, Grass and Dark Moves too? Genesect has it all, and that means there's always a Genesect set out there for you. You just gotta find it. You know, talking about bugs and realizing just how much of an effect they technically had on us is pretty funny when you think about it. The creator of Pokemon was originally a bug maniac, and Pokemon was inspired from these guys. Admittedly, it was weird that they were so bad at the beginning of the game when you think that they would have made bug types good out of respect, but they wound up kind of sort of getting there eventually and making some real bangers. Overall, I am grateful to Bugs, because if not for them, I wouldn't have my favorite game. And for that alone, I'll be nice to these little guys.